I remind you, Lord Justice Cochrane was very taken yeah. with the flagrant breach yeah. of the Code of Appointment. He came back to it many, many times because it was so stark. I just don't understand within a context where there is an exhortation to strengthen the codes, to give greater transparency, that your response to that is to strip out the very components of transparency and to validate the very wrongdoing so as it can happen again. There's nothing now under your code which would stop a Jonathan Bell or a Martian O'Millier doing what they did. And you have validated that and said that's okay under the guise of transparency. It's the very opposite. Well, I would argue with you, and as I say, if the RHI inquiry makes some specific recommendations, I'm happy to revisit. But I would argue that the greater issue was the behaviour of spe some special advisors, or not all special advisors, some special advisors in office, the accountability that they <laughs> had to their own minister, uh, and the responsibility that that minister had for their behaviour. And that is all made very specifically uh, enforced in the new code, yes. including as well the decision in relation to the pay afforded to a special yes. advisor has been taken out of the hands of the Minister. But I'm, fo I'm focusing <coughs> on, I know on what the Court of Appointments, yes, yes, and I the Court of Appointments is something you have watered down. And, you know, I'm sure the public don't need reminded that these are public appointments to public positions paid by public money. And yet the one post across the public sector that you can be gifted without any record being kept, any process whatsoever being recorded, any consideration of others out of a pool of candidates, the one post in the public sector that you can now be appointed to is a special advisor, courtesy of the weakening that you have delivered on the Code of Appointments. Well, you think that's meeting the expectation of yeah. public in terms well, of transparency? Can I say, I bring Sue in now, the, the question is, uh, the special advisor is a different appointment than they become a temporary civil servant, but they are in, sense, in essence a political appointment. It has, oh, to, be someone civil that, servant. It has to be someone that a minister is, well, is, is not comfortable with. with that. Yeah, well, then the question is are we more concerned with how they get there or what they do when they are there? And Both? For, for me, the, the, the bigger focus uh, in relation to inquiry has been in relation to... It's not, uh, not mutually exclusive. Well, you can have both. Uh, as I say, if the inquiry makes a recommendation in relation to it, I'm happy to revisit it. Uh, but my concern <coughs> in terms of getting uh, the appointments made within the very quick time frame that we had to get special advisors in place was to ensure that once appointed, the lines of accountability were very, very clear for them. Just, um, I mean, obviously, in developing this uh, new code um, and the contract, I mean, obviously, we did a lot of work in the working group. But we actually looked at the other jurisdictions. And so a lot of the words that strengthen the code have come from what's in place in the other jurisdictions. In the Sorry, it doesn't strengthen the code of appointment. No, no. I know you want to talk about the code of appointment. No, no, I don't actually. The code of no, 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 I'm really happy. It. Well, what I was going to say is that in the other jurisdictions, People, the other, they recognise the relationship between the special advisor and the minister. They recognise that it is a personal appointment and that actually a minister can make the decision as to who they want to appoint. They give that name to the civil service and then the contract is put in place. And so what we're saying is what happens behind the scenes before then, that is a matter for the appointing minister. It's at the point then they, they provide the name to us and then we go forward. With respect, Ms Gray, other jurisdictions have not had a public inquiry exposing the scandal of special advisors well, I think in that, many regards. Well, I can think of, uh, you know, there has been the odd public inquiry that has looked into the activities of special advisors mm. in, you know... Mm. So, so, so do you dissent from my summation that your answer to the wrongdoing in terms of the use of the old code on appointments was, is now simply to validate that so you don't have to submit anything to scrutiny. Well, Isn't that a fair summation? We are given, we are given the name of who the minister wants oh, to appoint. Yeah, you're given the name, yeah. but you don't have to keep what you used to have to keep, a note of why, a note of the process, uh, and the fact that other candidates were considered, like the old 
uh, scheme had a tick box exercise where the minister had to answer the questions, have I a clear idea of the requirements of the job and the person to do it? Have I created a wide enough candidate field? <coughs> Have I selected unjustifiable grounds from the pool of candidates? Has the character check vetting process been completed? Have I a written record at all stages of the appointment and selection processes? All one might have thought in the interest of transparency, very fair questions. But, but now liquidated, removed. Arguably then, 